Hey everyone, it's Blake. Welcome in to uh, this new episode uh, here on the channel. And I'm used to giving like episode numbers, but like there is no episode number for this one because this is the uh, my video that we've been kind of hyping up for a little while. Uh, you guys have been asking for a while and I was going to do it at some point, uh, but finally got around to, to being able to put it together. And that is the uh, TW 2020, how I book my storylines. How do I come up with all this stuff? Um, you guys have asked that a lot in the comments and, uh, I've, I've tried to put it off cause I don't, I don't think there's anything special to the way I do things to be honest with you, but, um, you guys wanted the video. So I, I decided to put it together and finally have everything kind of <laughs> a little more structured than what I actually do have it when I'm booking stuff. So uh, I knew if I put together a video, if I just said, Oh, here's how I do it. And you see all the sheets I actually have to work with, it would not be pretty, but let's look at, uh, this. And there's a lot to kind of get into here. I'll try to make this, um, not too long, but uh, I do want to give you guys some depth to this because to kind of give you, if you, you know, if you're someone who just, I know I've seen some of the comments. It's like I, I don't know necessarily how to how to get from point A to point B. How do I, you know, come up with these storylines and all this other stuff? It, it's your own game, so you can do what you want. This is just how I do it, um, and there is a lot to it. I know there's some people who just kind of want to wing it and they put together storylines on the go and they don't really put a lot into it, and, and that's fine. But if you're kind of in the situation, I guess, that, that I'm doing it where I'm I'm running a channel and I'm trying to put together these videos, and as you guys know now, I'm doing three different series. I've got a WWE, AW, and a WCW one. Like, we've got three different series that are all huge companies with huge rosters, and we somehow have to balance all that together. How do I do it? I'm going to give you the example, and we're going to use WWE as sort of the example. Um, you'll see a lot of stuff down here. We'll get to each of these tabs here in a minute, but... To be honest with you, when I go to you know, my first thing I do, any game I play, um, again, if I'm doing this, and it doesn't have to be, you don't even have to run a, a YouTube channel or, or a series or anything. Like, if you're just doing this, I do this in games that I don't even have, you know, put together videos for. And yes, I, I do still play other games that I just do for fun that I don't put any videos together for. The first thing I do in any game I play is I put together this right here, and it is a roster tab, which I know is nothing fancy, right? Like you're looking at this and you're thinking, all right, well, there's not a lot to this. Um, you know, I'm going to tell you exactly why people are where they are, but I put this together because I am someone who visually needs to see how everything is there. Like I'm a visual person. Um, I could look at the roster, how it's set up in TW. I could just go down, you know, the list and just keep kind of going down person by person, but I need to see the whole thing laid out like in a very visual manner. Um, and this to me is how I've always done it. Like, I promise you guys, you could go back to like one of the first TW games that I ever started playing many years ago. Um, what would that, I mean, there was, it was like, I don't know the one before, maybe it was even like in the EWR days. I don't know, but like, this is how I've always laid out my roster. Cause this is how it works. So here's what we have. If I'm doing the WWE game, I'm running the brand split, right? So here's my raw roster. Here's my SmackDown roster. Pretty simple. Why are people on the left? Why are people on the right? If you've been watching the save, uh, and these are going to keep popping up, by the way, and I'll get to these in just a minute. Um, so I'm going to try to keep it to where they don't pop up on the screen. But the reason I lay it out this way is because I can see each roster, right? So on the left, again, if you're watching the game, you know exactly what how this is kind of set up. You're seeing a theme. On the left are the baby faces. On the right are the heels. Now, I don't say that up here because that's just what I know. But certainly, you know, you could sit here and put in face, peel, however you want to do it. And, you know, that works perfectly fine. And by the way, I'm using Google Sheets for everything. You can use whatever, um, anything on Microsoft, Mac, whatever. Like there are a bunch of different things you could use. Numbers or if you're on a Mac, um, you know, I guess all the Microsoft, Excel and everything, it's, it's the same stuff. But I'm using Google Sheets is how I do this. So on the left, I have my baby faces. On the right, I have my heels. Um, and then I structure them, as you see here, by by kind of where I have them slotted. Um, you know, technically, you know, with the different changes to TW and the pushes and all that anymore, it's not necessarily set up like this anymore, right? So um, you just kind of, I kind of just have a feel for where I have people slotted. Um, so on the main event side, these are our top stars, as we know, top baby faces here. Becky Lynch, Daniel Bryan, Kevin Owens, Big E Cesaro. Um, on the right, you know, we've got our heels here, which... You know, we've got Styles, Orton, and Edge. They're all active. Now, as you'll see in the common theme as you go throughout this roster, what I do, and and look, this is just visually, once again, this helps me as someone who sees stuff visually. I need to see when someone's not available. And so 
I just do kind of this little um, whatever color this is and just kind of highlight a person if they're not available. So Bobby Lashley, <laughs> he retired a long time ago. As you know, if you watch the save, it really pissed me off. Um, but Lashley's no longer available. I keep him on the roster just because he's there. Um, you know, down here, Nikki Cross, maternity leave. You have Shirai's injured. Lacey Evans, maternity leave. So I can see this if I'm looking at a whole overview of the roster. I'm trying to put something together, right? I can see this immediately that, all right, I don't need to focus on these people. They're out of the picture right now. That They have no involvement because they're not available at all. So that helps me there, okay? So, the, and then as I said, main event, upper mid card, mid card, this is all just kind of based on where I have. And to be honest with you, there are some people I haven't moved at all, even though they're probably in a different spot. Um, you know, if you've been watching the WWE safe, like we've really started pushing Montez Ford. He just moved, you know, I moved him from mid card to upper mid card. Chad Gable, mid card in terms of ratings, like probably being used more as an upper mid. Like there's just, there's a lot of different scenarios here where this is just a starting point. Like that's, <laughs> that's probably the best way to put it. Like, this is just a starting point for me. Um, I don't update update this, like, every single save. Like, every, every episode, I don't update this. I just, this is just there as a guide for what I have. And I can easily click to this tab, and I can see exactly what I'm working with here, where people are slotted, because that way gives me a much better idea. All right, I've got Becky Lynch here, right? I really, I really need Becky Lynch to get a win. Like we just, we want to give her a win on Raw. Who do I want to put her up against? Well, I don't want to put her up against another main eventer because that's just not going to work. I don't want to put her up against Bailey because I don't want that match to happen yet. So what's the next possible option, right? Here's Carmella. Let's put her up against Carmella. Becky is a main eventer beating a mid Carter. That works fine. Doesn't hurt Carmella. Gives Becky a win. Boom. Problem solved. So I can see this just by the the structure here of of seeing kind of the hierarchy of who's where. I know that this person right here is in a better spot maybe than this person because they're up here. So again, that's just a tiny thing and that's just how my brain works. Um, so it's seeing those different things. And now when I look at this stuff now, for example, what I do as well, and you can do this, you know, when you add sort of the, what is the feature? Um, I should be better at telling you guys this, but you can add the feature where like you can put a little note in uh, on Google Sheets at least. And so what I do is, for everyone, when I start the roster, and you, as you'll see, these are not updated very often. This is just, this is me, gives me a starting point. Um, okay, Becky Lynch, what's her gimmick? Her gimmick is the man, right? So I put that in when I use this little here, and like I said, I can put the, the note in and all that. I really should be much better at telling you guys how to put this note in. Um, let me see if I can figure it out here. Um, let's put in Steve Austin. And let's see if I can put the note. I think uh, maybe it's it's a comment or note. Let me. I'm gonna give you guys. Okay, it's not comment. <laughs> you guys are getting this on the fly. I just I want to make sure you know how to do this. There you go. So insert note. So what I would do is I would right click here. I would insert a note, and I would put you know Steve Austin, badass. It's rated as a legendary. Okay. So that's how I go about doing this. So when you see, you know the little little tabs here on the side for Becky Lynch. That's because in the note I've added, I've added her, her gimmick is the man. It's rated as legendary. So you know what that tells me? I don't need to touch this gimmick at all. There's no reason. Unless Becky Lynch is making a big hill turn or something, there's no reason for me to touch this gimmick. Daniel Bryan, yes, man, great. I'm not touching that either. Um, so, you know, you can go up and down the line here. You can see the people and kind of, I don't even, I guess I didn't put in Cesaro. He's the best in the world. I don't know how good his gimmick is. I'm trying to think if there's anyone whose gimmick is just kind of okay um i don't know but you, but you see what i mean here like this is how also this helps me kind of story-wise come up with different ideas right so i'm not just seeing the roster i'm not just seeing you know these different people sitting here as main eventers or upper mid carters and just leaving it at that i can actually hover over it and say okay kevin owens is a badass <laughs> that's the character he's playing so he's playing a badass right all right, so he's going up against, let's say, Dolph Ziggler, who's an arrogant heel. So how do we tie that into the story? Okay, so I, I know their gimmicks. I don't have to look through TW every time to try to remember what the gimmicks are because, again, I'm working with big rosters here, right? And that's where, you know, if you're playing with a smaller company, this sh this should be a lot easier to do just because if you're laying it out, there's there's a lot less people, right? Like, there's a lot less that you have to remember. But, like, for me, I look at this roster, I'm like, there's almost 100 people here. I can't remember exactly what Keith Lee's gimmick is. Okay, it's limitless. It's an adequate gimmick. But Keith Lee's leaving this, this limitless character, okay? Well, if we want to put him in there with Bray Wyatt, well, Bray Wyatt's a vigilante. So how do we 
use a a limitless character with a vigilante character? What's the story we can tell there? And that's what I, I try to think of when I'm putting these stories together. Um, so that's something else that I kind of just add in as a little element is adding that note so I can see exactly what the gimmick is. If I'm wanting to throw together a match, if I'm wanting to throw together a quick feud, okay, Bailey's all about her ego, right? Becky Lynch thinks she's the man. We can use that. Like those are things we can use um, end of the story. Like Becky or Bailey's playing this, you know, big ego character. Becky Lynch though says she's the man. We can use those together. Um, so that's kind of the roster. And I know, you know, this certainly plays into the stories because I need to be able to know kind of where everyone is slotted, what everyone is. Um, and this is the way I do it. Baby face on the left, heels on the right. That's for raw baby face on the left, heels on the right for SmackDown. Um, and I just mix and match. I move people wherever I need to move them. They switch brands. All we do is move them over, right? Like we copy and paste. We can move Asuka to Raw, and guess what? It carries the note over with her. Empress of Tomorrow is there, um, and then we just, you know, we take it off that. That's what we would do. So um, it's it's very, it is, it's once you figure it out, like it's something that I've just used for years and years, and it just works for me. Um, so again, you can, however you want to do it, you can structure it however you want, but to me, I need to see everything in front of me. I don't need to scroll I don't need to do any of that kind of stuff, which obviously, you know, I have to scroll down a little bit. <laughs> I got to see the lower mid card and I don't really go beyond lower mid card. I don't have everyone on the roster on here because I'm like, I'm not going to use some of these people. Um, you know, and then I've got the occasional wrestlers down there, Triple H and Goldberg. Um, and then I've got the, the floating champion. So the way I have it structured, if you watch the WWE save, I have both tag team champions being able to float back and forth between brands. So I do update that. So I'm like, all right, I have to remember Jeff and Ricochet can go wherever they want. Basil and DeVille can go wherever they want. Um, so if you haven't watched the WWE saved yet, sorry, I probably spoiled some things here, but sorry, that's just kind of what we're doing. So this is the starting point. Everything I do is starts with a roster because <laughs> you kind of have people to be able to put your storylines in motion, right? So the structure is here with the roster. Um, this is how I put it together. It's just easy for me to use. Now let's get to, um, <laughs> something that's going to look like just a complete, uh, mess here. And, and I promise you, <laughs> It's if you've watched the series, you know it's way more in depth with this. And I, if you haven't watched the series, look, I'm basically giving away the first month. So sorry, I'm trying not to do that, but I would say stop now, go watch the first month before you watch this, uh, if you want to get into WWE save, because it's going to give some stuff away. But this is my schedule, okay? So this is how I put together my each episode schedule. Um, again, it's all visual. Like I need this to be very visual because. It's how my brain works. I need to be able to go from left to right. Like it's just, it's all this different stuff. So however your brain works, you can you can make this you know work in, in your fashion. Um, but here's what I do. This is sort of my quick you know quick notes version of what's going to happen on these episodes. Um, so for each show I have, I don't have to necessarily put in exactly you know what my story is with Daniel Bryan and, and John Morrison. But I know Brian's going to beat Morrison. So Brian over Morrison. Cesaro over Benjamin. Um, by the way, a lot of this is, I think, King of the Ring related if we go back to the start of our save. Um, but this is how I put it together, okay? Vince is going to announce the new Raw GM. Um, you know, Styles is hyping up. So these are just basic bullet points based off of the stories, which we will get to down here in these templates in a second. Uh, but this is my schedule. This is how I put everything together. Um, and and I this is how I plot it, right? So, for example, um, you know, if I want to make sure I add this stuff in, okay? So, we'll use Asuka again as an example. Um, Asuka hypes up, you know, match for next week. So, we're going to say Asuka's going to have a match next week. Um, and we're going to put her over here, Asuka over Natalia. Okay? So, then, you know, here's what happens, right? What I could do technically, and I don't want to do this because I don't want, or actually I can, I can just um, do the back button. You guys can see why this works for me is because then I can look ahead, right? Like I can see many moves ahead. So I'm like, okay, I know this week Asuka's here. So I've got that plotted for this Raw. Well, on the next Raw, she has to have that match. So I need to go ahead and plot that here. So visually I can tell, all right, I know I'm going to have this stuff on Raw, right? Um, you know, and we can do that with any storyline, you know, Austin, um, fights rock. All right, there you go. So Austin fights rock and we're going to go here and say, what's, you know, what's the next step in that storyline? Well, Austin's going to actually take on rock and let's say Austin beats rock. 
All right, so that's there. Um, and then, you know, I can keep going. I can go down here. Okay, what's... I know that last week, Austin beat The Rock. What's the follow-up, right? And let's go to the next week on Raw. What's that follow-up going to be? This is just so helpful because I can plot all these points and actually do it without trying to remember what happened before because all I have to do is look back at the previous. Okay, Austin beat The Rock. What led to that? Well, they had a fight on the previous edition, okay? We need to play that into somehow on this in this match, okay? Um, you know, Oscar hype separate match for next week. Well, well, what is she, you know, who's she fighting? Well, she's fighting Natalia. And like, these are things that I can go ahead and put in there in advance, knowing that this is the next logical step in whatever, you know, this segment, this story, this character direction, this is the next logical step for that. I know I'm really getting into the weeds here, guys, but like, I- I'm trying to just, again, I'm just being full, fully honest with you. Like, this is how I do it. And it's not going to be for everyone. This is going to be way too much for people who just want to play the game but if you really you know want to go through and and try to try to do a lot of detail which i think can be a gift and a curse sometimes because i don't love the amount of detail i go into on this stuff but um you just have to do it right and and i think that's just this is what works for me and and i can go down the schedule here and like this is just how i do it i color code it you know raw smackdown makes sense i do my pay-per-views with a different color code um you know that's just what i need to see visually and, you know, if I want to do something on Raw on the first week of June, and let's say there's a big story that I'm plotting here, Austin fighting The Rock, well, I can go ahead and say, all right, I know that's a big plot point. Well, if I want the story to get somewhere else, let's go ahead and put that in June week four, and then it's like, okay, well, how do I get there? How do I get from week one to week four? Then I can just sort of plot each direction, right? I can plot each logical step. Okay, that's going to be on the next Raw. That's going to be on this Raw. And I can see it all right there in front of me. Um, and, and look, this isn't for everything. Like I, There are some things like I just do week by week, and I just have to figure out the next step. But there are bigger stories where it's like, okay, I know this needs to go here. I know this needs to go here. And then I can work it all the way to August, right? Like, And I, I can just do the next plot point and the next plot point. And if I need to move it around, I can move it around. But this is just how I do it. I'm going to go ahead and put all this back so I don't lose any of it. Um, but like, this is just what, you know, how I, I can do it. And this again is the very short notes version. I don't go in and just, you know, write out everything and every possible detail. I kind of save that for either, um, you know, notepad stuff in the game and TW, I could put it in there. I could put it in like, you know, a note sheet, like a notes app or something. I use that a lot. I, or I just write it down on paper um, you know, I write out the stories in more detail in that, and I put it in our story templates, which we're about to look at. Um, but this is just a short note version of here's what happened. If I need to recall what happened, or if I want to start plotting the next point, um, which again, like this, Vince is going to announce the raw GM. Okay. I knew I needed to put that in there. Well, let's go ahead and reveal that Austin's going to be the raw GM on the next week. And like, you can just, you can follow the story and, and be honest with you. Like there's no, <laughs> There, there's no rhyme or reason as to why I put stuff where. This is the very basic quick notes. I'm going to keep saying that. Like, that's what this is. The quickest version I can to get this down to know what's going to happen on the show. I can go in more detail when, you know, I actually get into it. And I'm plotting these stories in these templates, which we're about to look at, I promise. But that's just my schedule. So I have my roster tab. I have my schedules tab. And those are the two that I, you know, use a lot just to kind of keep up with everything and, and kind of use my organization that way. And uh, as, a, as I mentioned, I just, you know, color code, um, what's the next show? And honestly, I probably do about uh, four months. I know that sounds like a lot, but like when I started this series, I probably did all this, laid everything out on this until whatever, um, you know, I don't even know, October maybe. And that way I had a great view of where I was going. And then additionally, you know, what I would do is, and I don't want to scroll all the way down because, again, I'm going to give a lot of stuff away if I do that. Uh, But I'm fine with giving away the first month here. (laughs) And so you guys can can be fine with that. But, you know, then I would start putting, I know it's June, but it's like, okay, what do I want for WrestleMania, right? Like, what's my WrestleMania matches? Well, let me just put those down there somewhere further down. That way I know that's the point I want to get to. And that's going to lead us into looking at some of these story templates and how I put together my storylines. All right. So again, this is probably pretty self-explanatory. So here's how I do it. Um, and knowing that 
I'm not not everyone's going to be in a big storyline. So what I do is uh, normally I'm going to have this as story template one, but normally here's what this would be named. This would be named either honestly I've done this in multiple directions. I could either just say Kevin Owens. So this is the story, the big story I want to tell with Kevin Owens. All right. Um, or I could just rename it kind of, you know, the bigger situation. I, I could even just use the title, right? Like I said, all right, this is the U.S. title story. We're going to use this here. And then I would have multiple of these, um, you know, with different ones. So like U.S. title, we could do it. You know, you name it by the worker. You can name it by the title. Um, you can name it by, you know, basically the story. Owens wants gold. Um, however you want to do it. And this is how I remember it. So what we have on the left here is our schedule, right? So Kevin Owens is on Raw, so we're only going to have him on Raw shows, pay-per-views, etc. Um, that's just what he does. So Kevin Owens is here. And the storyline is that Kevin Owens wants gold. That's my main theme of the storyline. Kevin Owens wants the U.S. title. Like that's that's my primary starting point for this whole situation. And why do I have all these people here? Because these are some of the bigger names that are going to be involved in this story. So as you know, if you watch the series. Different people are going to intertwine with each other and storylines are going to cross over and all this other stuff. So there's no perfect way to do this. This is just, again, if you're looking for ways to create stories, this is how I found it to be pretty effective. Um, and so here's where we start. I know my story is that Kevin Owens wants gold. What's the ultimate goal here? It's Kevin Owens to win the United States Championship. Okay, that's the last point in my story of this particular development. We'll get down here in a second. So this is my big, big story, all right? And I want to get to this. So how do I get there, all right? So, I, you know, based on how I set it up, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So basically six shows, this story builds for six different shows. Um, and, you know, again, the natural ending point, I know the end of my story, and, and I will say that. Like, to me, that's the biggest thing. And I'm going to show you guys what I use as part of kind of coming up, coming up with ideas in a minute, but it is what is the end point first? Like my end point is that Kevin Owens wins the United States Championship. That's my end point. Which again, I could even just write that here, and there's no reason, um, you know, to even do if I want to just be plain and simple. I need Kevin Owens to win the United States Championship. How do I get there? Well, here's what I know. I know that Sheamus is the champion to start with. So what's the first step? Well, Owens has to explain, you know, why is he not in the King of the Ring? Because he's, you know, this is King of the Ring time. Why is he not in there? Okay. Because he wants the U.S. title shot. So it's like, what if Kevin Owens, you know, this is one of those things where everything I ask is what if. So Kevin Owens needs to win the United States title. That's my ending point. I start there. So I, I start with this. Like, this is the first thing I put. And here's what I'm going to go ahead and show you right here. And we'll go back to this. This may be easier. Like, just the way I do it, I mean, I'm I'm an animal. So, it's just like, the structure's not great here. I just put, on Raw, I'm going to have two different segments, probably. Those segments are going to be Owens explaining why he wants the shot, title shot, and he's going to beat Drew Gulak, okay? But it's probably a lot easier if you want to see it kind of going down, and visually, again, this helps, is if I do it this way. And I say, all right, on Raw, these are the two segments I'm going to have here, because that's set up for schedule. Owens needs to explain why he wants the U.S. title shot, and then he's going to beat Drew Gulak. It's just kind of a, you know, a match to have. All right. So I can do it this way. Either one. You can jump between any of these templates. It doesn't matter. But the question always to me starts with what if. And this is where I can use my my section here of notes, which I don't have anything on here right now. But this is more for your own thing. It's like, all right, if I get stuck at Raw of June week one, let's just, I always have this question staring right at me. What if? All right. So Owens explains giving up, you know, the King of the Ring title or King of the Ring uh, qualifier for the U.S. title shot, all right? Uh, then he beats Gulak. Great. Well, you know, it's like, what if the first match we get to, which is down here, what if Owens doesn't win the championship in the first match and they actually go to a time limit draw? Well, that gives Sheamus a shot, you know, to retain the title. So he's still the champion. Well, what happens if Sheamus retains the champion? How do I get to Owens becoming the United States champion, right? That's the question. So, well, you know, I'm over here and I'm like, well, what if Austin was really impressed by the match? Um, you know, and you're seeing all this over here, right? Like this is my starting point up here and this gets me to here. Um, Austin was really impressed by the match and he announces a rematch. So, um, you know, that's that's kind of your 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 setup is that Austin just decides the GM, he wants to see another match between these two. Great. 
but it's also going to be a last man standing match. He's like, okay, well, so, and I know I'm kind of rambling here, but this is the point. I know that to get to here, I have to ask a lot of what if questions. And if I don't want it just to be as simple as Owens beats the champion, you know, right here in week three, and that's that, how do I keep adding in these different elements? And so this just gives me a much better, you know, clear picture of working with a different story. Um, and, you know, being able to see on each episode of my show, I can see what's going to happen. Like, th- and I can do this all up front, right? Like, and I'm just letting my mind go here. Like, it's just anything. And we're going to do that in a second. When we get to Zane's world, <laughs> which that's kind of funny. Um, but that's what I do. So now we get to this point. All right. Owens beats Sheamus. He's the champion. So he wins the U S title. Well, what's next? Let's just keep asking that what if question. Well, what if Owens decides he wants to bring back the United States Open Title Challenge? All right, so the U.S. Total Open Title Challenge has returned. Kevin Owens brings it back. Well, let's plot that story. Like, let's use this to go here. And so that's the same thing I just, I'm always asking. And you know what? In many situations, there may be stories that just end here. And, and I ask myself the what if. Well, you know. Owens wins the title. All right. Well, what if? I don't know exactly if there's a, a an immediate story that needs to be told here with Kevin Owens. Well, I don't have to go any further. I just kind of leave this here. This is that. Let me go find another story, and we go on there from there. Um, but this is how it's laid out. And I think there's probably a lot of people that are looking at this, and it's just like <laughs> visually I think it should help you because um, you can see it going from point A, point B, and just so forth, right? So this is kind of how I do it. I mean, it's, like I said, it's not a perfect science. And some of my stories are not great. Like, I'll admit, like, some of my stories are just kind of, they're just, they just flow. And there's really no rhyme or reason to it. But I'm always asking, what's the next logical step in each story? Um, And coming up with, I mean, honestly, like, one of the reasons and one of the easy ways I come up with stories is just to go into the TW 2020 and look at the angles and just, find some ideas like um you know there, there's a lot of good angles in there that's that are good for starting points and those are a, a lot of what i use is just basic angles just to kind of and then just taking them to another degree like just pushing them up a notch so these are the different things you can do on that like i said different templates here it's what i use um you know i mean you could do it this way like i mentioned <laughs> this way is just me putting everything on one line this way is just me kind of, you know, visually looking down and going, all right, these are the two segments I'll have on Raw. I bold the matches, um, you know, just as to kind of be able to see those more easily. And that's what I do. So, um, and then any any logical development from one story that maybe this is the main theme, I want to kind of transition into another theme of a story. And then I just come down, I just copy this here. But again, like this is not even necessary if I don't think it is. Like there's no reason for it to be here great. Like, we'll just keep this where it's at. And, you know, this is just a logical extension of what's going on here. And it's the same story. So, uh, but I I think this, this section right here is always my friend. I know there's nothing in there, but it's just, I'm always asking the what if questions. Like, all right, what if Owens, you know, wins the U.S. title, wants to unify it uh, with IC title. All right. That's a possible what if. I've never used that, but I could write that down and say that's possible. Well, what if Owens wins the U.S. title um, and then he gets injured and has to give up the title? There's another possibility, right? So these are just, I think this is where I just let my mind run wild. And I promise you, the first idea is never the best idea. <laughs> it's usually, it takes me a while to get there. But I just, I, I don't look at any idea as, any, as a bad idea until I'm like, okay, that makes sense. We can run with that. And then if that's the, that's the way I decide to go, well, let's just keep going. Let's keep going asking the next what if question. Like, that's what I do. So, again, I know this is, I'm probably rambling a bit, and you guys are probably like, what is this guy talking about? But <laughs> that's how my mind works, and this is just how I do it. So, like I said, um, if I'm doing a, a sample storyline here, and we've got Sami Zayn wanting to rule the world, um, that's the storyline. So, I've come up with a theme. My theme is that Sami Zayn wants to rule the world, and it's going to involve Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns. Um, where do I start? Okay, uh, let's see. Sami. Wants to rule the world, so he decides um, that he's going to challenge Roman Reigns for the Universal title. Okay, so that's your setup here. Um, All right, so my next question, I forgot to put my what if up here, because it's always got to be there. Always got to keep reminding myself to ask that question. What if? 
Um, so Sammy's there, right? If I get stuck and I don't know what to do here, I'm just going to go over here to my notes and just kind of freestyle a little bit. Uh, let's see. Okay, so let's say Reigns accepts the challenge. What if Reigns accepts the challenge and then Sammy cheats to win um, and and wins the title, all right? Then what happens, right? Well, Reigns completely loses it, <laughs> destroys Sammy. Uh, let's say that's the next logical step. And I just keep going from there until I'm like, all right, this this, this isn't going to work. So I don't want to do that. I, I don't want Sammy winning the Universal title. So there's just different ways I can do this. All right, so let's go here. Um, you know, and I just keep going down the line. It's like, okay, next, what if uh, Roman accepts, Reigns accepts the, the challenge and match sets for pay-per-view. Okay, so that's there. Um, you know, let's say Sammy... Throws a banana peel at Roman Reigns. <laughs> All right, we're just having fun with this. Reigns slips on the banana peel and injures himself. Oh, boy. The tribal chief down via banana. Um, you know, and then it's like, all right, next what if? Well, Reigns is injured. All right, well, then what? Um, the Usos uh, decide that they are going to beat down Sammy... <laughs> I know we're just kind of going all, but see, you see my point here. Like we're just, what's the next thing? And if this doesn't work, if I look at this, I'm like, you know what? This is not going to work. Or maybe I need to move the Usos beat down of Sammy here. And then I got to come up with something here. Um, that's just kind of how I do it. I, I just, I don't, I don't see any idea as a bad idea until it's just not going to work for the story. Right. Um, so let's say my next idea I come up with is <laughs> Sammy wins the title from Reigns. Well, you know what? I don't want that to happen. So that's a bad idea. Let's just, let's not use that. Let's go somewhere else. So that's just kind of what I come up with on that. But again, this is, you know, lay it out however you want. There's different templates here. Um, this is just kind of how I do it. You know, again, I, I know some people just shoving it all together in one may be not as easy to kind of see versus if you just do it this way and kind of put them on different rows. That's a possibility. Um, but that's just how I do it. And, and like I said, we can have fun with different storylines here. With, with all that, but I just, I just, I start with the main characters. Like, that's the best way to do it. And my, you know, personal experience is just, what are the characters I want to interact? And why, when I do this, Roman Reigns is here, Sami Zayn is here. These are two main eventers. Um, I want them to interact. How do I do that? Well, let's put them in this story together. Let's come up with this. And like I said, I sometimes, I just go into TW, I'll go to the angles, and I'll look at all the different angles that are there, and, and there will be something. Trust me, as you guys know, there are lots of angles in there. And something will spark my interest. Then I'm just like, all right, let's use that as the start for the storyline. And then we just go from there with it. Um, and one of the ways I do that, and I'm going to show you guys exactly what I use here. Um, it's a, I use this because it's just, it's very helpful. So what it's called is the 36 Dramatic Situations. Now, I'm really getting into it here. I know you guys are like, wait a second, this guy's this guy from like the 1800s or what? But I promise you, this can be very helpful, and this is what I use a lot too when I get stuck. If you search for the 30, 36 dramatic situations, um, this guy here, invented in 1895. <laughs> you guys, I know there's some guy that is loud to me like, oh my gosh, this guy is get, really getting into like philosophy and all this other stuff. But the reason why I use this, and I found this a long time ago, now, I don't even know why. I just, I randomly, you know, as, as somebody who, you know, does story stuff and writing is, you know, all this kind of thing. It's just, I found it. So the 36 dramatic situations, um, you'll go through some of these and you'll look at these and be like, what the hell is this? Like, I don't understand any of this. What does this mean? But there's actually some pretty good starting points in here, um, you know, where you've got different stuff. I mean, like crime pursued by vengeance. Well, we're not doing like any crimes necessarily in wrestling, but um, look, there's a criminal. Uh, if, if you're looking at our WWE save, right? Roman Reigns is like, he's basically a criminal. Like this guy's going out and committing all these violent acts against people. Well, who are the Avengers? And if you can look at the WWE save, like John Cena is like one of the early Avengers that we have trying to sort of, um, you know, come after punishment for Roman Reigns. And, you know, there's different stuff like that. Again, it's the same thing here, like this pursuit this is just something that I have found helpful that I'm like, all right, that sparks some ideas. And look, you may be someone who's like into, you know, literature and all this other stuff, and maybe it helps. But when you look at kind of the main themes of these stories, 
a lot of it you can use in wrestling. And <laughs> for some reason, I just, I've, I've always found this easy to use. Um, you know, as I'm going down here, like abduction, like we've seen people abducted in wrestling, but, um, you know, it's still something you can use, right? Um, different stuff like rivalry of kins. Well, okay. The Usos have a rivalry. Well, there you go. Um, you know, all that kind of stuff. Madness. Bray Wyatt. He's a madman. Who's his victim? Well, if you could look at our, our series, the starting point is Drew McIntyre. Like this is one that I was like, all right, yeah, we've got a madman. Bray Wyatt fits that a victim. You know, Bray Wyatt goes insane and wants to go after Drew McIntyre. There you go. There's a storyline. Um, you know, it's just like, it's different stuff like this. And, and I go through all these things. And again, you're going to look at this and there's going to be like 32 of these. You're going to be like, what the hell does this even mean? <laughs> but there may be four of them that come up with a, a great, you know, idea that just sparks something in your mind. You're like, all right, I can use that. Um, I don't know how many crimes to love you're going to use <laughs> in wrestling, but this is something that, you know, I just, I find very interesting. Ambition. Like, there's another one. Okay, I've got someone who wants a championship. He's an ambitious person. He wants the title. Who's the adversary? He has the champion. So it's like Owens. Owens is very ambitious, wants the championship. Uh, that's the thing coveted. The adversary is Sheamus because he's the champ. So, you know, it's all those things. And it's just, this is something that helps me. There's a lot of stuff, you know, in writing and all this other stuff. But like the 36 dramatic situations, I don't know why. It's just something where I look at all these different scenarios. I'm like, okay, that works in wrestling. I just have to tweak it a little bit. So there you go. You probably weren't expecting a, a philosophy or literature discussion here on this video, but the 36 dramatic situations, if you want to Google it, you can. Don't buy the book. I will tell you that right now because I don't think the book is does it really that much justice. You can literally just look at it on Wikipedia. Um, that's all I use. Uh, there's no reason to buy the, the full book or anything. So, um, all right. Is there anything else <laughs> that I have for you guys? I know this has been all over the place, but look, some of you guys want to know how I do it. It's a little bit of madness. Um, <laughs> I will tell you that. It's just it's a little bit of madness, but this is how I put it together. I start with the roster. That's number one. Uh, put my roster in. Then from there, I start to think about the stories, and I kind of do some of the rough drafts of the stories in here, and then again, that's just putting plot A, point A, point B, point C, point D, and so forth. Um, but I will say one of the most helpful things and, you know, I will, I will quickly make this real quick. This may be the most helpful part of, of what you get out of this. Um, and I'm just going to take all this away. If there is one thing I would suggest, the, the helpful part is always going to be, if you're having a pay-per-view, I, I think this is the, the easiest thing for me to kind of, I'm going to move this over here because it's going to keep <laughs> moving along. If I'm doing a pay-per-view, I think the first thing you always want to do is, you know, what are the matches you want to get to, right? Um, like I said, let's say we want to do just random matches here. Um, Zane over <laughs> CM Punk. Uh, we're just going to, you know, we're just adding in a bunch of random people. I think it's much easier to start there. Um, and maybe, like I said, not even with like Kevin Owens winning the gold. Who do I want Kevin Owens to face at the next pay-per-view? That maybe is the bigger discussion. So if I go here... And I'm like, all right, I want Owens, um, you know, to beat, I don't know, pick anybody, Mustafa, Mustafa Ali. All right, so that's the pay-per-view match I want to get to. Well, then it's much easier for me to go up here and be like, all right, how do I get to this match? I think that's something else, too, I would always kind of think about is what are the matches I need to get to? Okay, I have this many shows to get to these matches. And then how do I get there, right? Like that, to me, is also easier. It's, it's much easier to know. Like I said, I do start with the end point when I'm doing the storylines, but it's it's more about I know I need to get there. Like these are the matches I want to get to. Then it makes it much easier just to ask myself, okay, how do I get there? And how do I make them different? You know, how do I come up with these stories for these different matches? I think that's also something I would definitely suggest if you're like, okay, I'm really struggling to come up with storylines and matches and all this other stuff. Guess what? You know what? I could just look at this and say, all right, here's my main event face. Here's a main event heel, you know, why not, right? Like, okay, because I have Reigns tied up with Cena, so I, let's put McIntyre with Miz. Um, so let's put that on the schedule. I know I want McIntyre to beat Miz or whatever, you know, take this away. Um, how do I get there? Like, how do I get there on this SmackDown, this SmackDown, this SmackDown? And I think that makes it much easier too because it's like, okay, well, let's just keep asking the what if question. Well, what if Miz attacks McIntyre here? All right, Miz attacks McIntyre. He's down and out. Well, 
What if on the next episode, McIntyre, you know, tries to get revenge on Miz. Miz runs away. All right. Well, that's easy enough. And then on the next episode, let's say that uh, Vince announces McIntyre versus Miz for WrestleMania. So there you go. Like, we got there, right? Like, I mean, it's not it's not great by any means, but it's like we got there because we knew we had to fill these different points, and we knew this is the match we're getting to. So it's just it's coming up with things to, to how do we get to that point. And I think that everything I've said in this entire video, which, again, I know has been rambling, and I apologize to you guys for that, but I think it's it's always start at the at the end. I think that is makes it so much easier than just trying to come up with it because then you're just going to get somewhere and you're like, uh-oh, I'm stuck. <laughs> but like, if you start at the end, you know what you have to get to. Um, and I think that just makes it a lot easier. So there you go. Um, <laughs> I don't know if this helped any of you guys. Some of you guys may have stopped watching like a minute into this thing and just been like, you know what? This is way too complicated, but I promise you it's really not. It's really a three-part system that I feel like I use. My roster, that's my basis for everything. My schedule, what I need to happen and when I needed it to happen. Um, again, and what matches I want to get to. Uh, and then it's this. And I, I will tell you, like this, this right here is like one of those things where it's just, it's optional. Like you don't even have to really dive into this. This is very detailed, right? Every step. And then, like I said, it's going to be more challenging too and difficult. And I don't, I'm not great at this, but it's like some of these storylines are going to intersect. And then it's like, well, what do I do? Do I put another tab here? Do I keep it in the same one? It's however you want to do it. I think it's just, it's whatever kind of works for your brain. And I would hope that something in this video is going to spark something in your brain. And that's really the whole point of it, um, is that there's something in here that you're like, oh, that clicked. And like, let me use that. I'm not going to use the same thing that, you know, Blake uses, but I'm going to, I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say, boom, like that, I can use that. Like that's something. And maybe I'll put this here and there, whatever. Um, but I think always starting at the end is what I, if you take anything away from this, <laughs> What matches do you want for your pay-per-views? You know, plug those in first. And I think that's helped me the most just to know that, okay, I know from going to King of the Ring, the Great American Bash, the SummerSlam, I know my big matches for all those things. Now I just have to come up with an idea to get there. And that's where it gets fun at that point because you're like, okay, well, now we can come up with a lot of different ideas. But this part right here, really want to go in detail, always asking what if, like, this is my my end point right here. My story is that Kevin Owens is going to win the U.S. title. How do I get there? Like, this is where it's going to end right here. He's going to win the title here. What, what do I need to do on these five shows to get there? That's how I do it. Um, not perfect, but <laughs> there you go. Um, so, again, I know that was a lot. I know this, you know, there's probably not a lot of organization in what I just said, but I want to give you guys something. If you want like a part two with something a little more, you know, something else, if you want, you know, q and I don't, I don't care. If you have any questions, just ask them in the comments, of course. You can do that. Um, but any other questions you have, let me know. I'm sure there's things I've forgotten. I'm sure there's things I put in that you don't care about whatsoever. But I did want to kind of show you just, if you wanted to see it visually, how I do it, this is it. Like these are just the ways that I get there. And Again, it's it's a lot about having a huge roster. If you don't have a mega huge roster like these, like again, I'm working with this one, WWE, AEW's got 100-something wrestlers, WCW 1998's got 100-something. These big rosters, this is the way I have to manage it. Um, and especially if I'm putting together a video, and I'm not just doing it for my own fun, um, because otherwise my stuff's going to come across silly, and I don't want to do that. So, um, so there you go. There's a look at kind of how I put my storylines together how I book them. Hopefully you got something out of this, even if you didn't get a whole lot. Maybe there's something in here, like I said, that'll spark an idea for you. Um, but if you guys have any other questions, um, you know, you want me to leave any templates, I can kind of make a mock template if you want in Google Sheets. I can put the link to that in, uh, I can just put my entire thing and I'm not going to give you all my stuff in here, but <laughs> I can put, um, you know, basically this entire template, I can put it into a Google Sheet that's shareable. Uh, that you guys can use. I'll have to figure out how to do that. I'm not, you know, great at that, but I can probably figure that out. Uh, but you guys let me know in the comments what you think. And uh, if you want me to do any more of these videos or any other areas in TW, just let me know. Hopefully this one doesn't run you away. Um, but uh, again, you guys are great. I appreciate the feedback. Anything else, uh, any other questions you have, uh, let me know. Hopefully this was helpful in some way, shape, or form. Although I think I rambled quite a bit, but... <laughs> 
Yeah, you guys know. You watch the videos. That's just how it works. So uh, appreciate you guys watching. And uh, again, let me know what you think. Any comments, any questions, uh, let me know in the comments section.